Alright all, alright all, I all, I all, I all, and welcome back to a new video. Min for the Ryanair 12, and it is Envoi Allen. You could give me a thousand to one on my fight, and I wouldn't back him. Shakan Forsois will win at the Ladbrokes Dub and Chase. I was all over him at Christmas. And David Splain thought he was riding Duvan, I think. Those are one of the ones you're there going, oh jeez. And it is classical dream, please shoot me. Faheen the Machine. Hi guys, and welcome back to a new video. And as promised, it is a episode answering some of you guys horse racing questions or questions to me that you put down in the comments from the last video it was great to see so many of you guys getting in touch uh, especially given the times we're in there isn't much to uh, look forward to quite at the moment but hopefully uh, with the interaction we can build we can still uh, look forward to next season and hopefully look forward to even some of the uh, flash action come the middle and late end of the summer. So actually there was a lot more questions than I thought there might be so I'm going to end up splitting it half and half so I'm going to cover around half the questions today and half the questions in another video which will probably be out on Wednesday maybe. Uh, but as I say you know uh, great to see so many of you guys get in touch and hopefully you'll uh, be interested by my answers. So starting off with Stephen Maloney, who says, coming over for next year's Irish National, is it hard to get to the track from Dublin? And what is the best horse you have ever seen live? And then just a question about Tiger Roll. Hopefully I might have the questions written out here on the screen or like a little kind of screen grab of the comment and stuff like that. First of all, um, from Dublin city centre to Ferry House would be a tricky enough thing. Uh, I'd say there would be, like for a meeting like the Irish National, there's probably buses going uh, from the town centre. Other than that, you'd probably have to get a taxi or try to get a lift out there. It's not really accessible from a public transport perspective unless there is like a um, kind of special Ferry House bus going. Uh, I know there certainly is one of those for like Punchestown that goes from the middle of town so you'd have to have a look out for that and uh, one that's probably going to crop up quite a lot in this video is you know people saying you know see um you know your favorite horse and stuff like that and the best horse and stuff like that i completely remain to the opinion that the best horse i ever saw live was duvan uh, I, I was lucky enough to see him a couple of times at Leopardstown and he was just absolutely different gear. I remember him winning uh, the Open Grade 1 race on the 27th. What, it was called the uh, dial a -Bet chase back then where he beat Sizing John seven lengths and he beat Simply Ned, Black Hercules in the same race and he, he was just absolutely electric. Uh, such a shame what's happened but you know, nothing can happen. And will Tiger Roll make Aintree next year? There's nothing suggesting he won't, uh, but I think it's going to be a very tough ask for him to win, I must confess. I think perhaps the time has kind of gone, and he was kind of put in his pace, place by Easy's Land at Cheltenham this year. Um, so I'm not sure. I'd say, though, there's probably every chance that he'll make the race next year, but I probably wouldn't be backing him. One that came up a couple of times, so therefore I'm putting the two of you guys, it was Wayne Harrison. Wayne uh, is a regular commenter on the video, so hope you're enjoying them, Wayne. Uh, and Steve Cooper put it as well, kind of saying, what was your biggest punt or kind of winning punt or winning bet? And um, pretty much it was album photo last year for the Gold Cup. Uh, which is fairly frequently advertised by myself on this channel, probably a bit too many times. But backed him at all types of prices, you know, from 33s down to 25s, down to 20s, then even got 16s on the day. Uh, it was one I kind of really, really wanted to go in, and it did go in. So I think it was also probably the most satisfactory one from a long-term perspective as well, because I pinned my colours to the mast on album photo last year. I did again this year, and he's a horse that just kind of isn't letting me down, uh, which you don't get that many of those horses that don't give you those, you know, day of doom sort of things. So, yeah, it was album photo in the 2019 Gold Cup. I had a bit on him this year as well, but nowhere near as much uh, returns because of the price, obviously. Moving on to Ned Fulford. Ned, you say, firstly, how do you go about making your antipo selections? 
and how do you manage to keep up with the form in Ireland? I don't really do many anti-post selections apart from Cheltenham. Cheltenham would be the only one I would do it. Um, I try to keep, like if you're looking to have a bit of an anti-post kitty, I would use most of it on Cheltenham. Just because there's not that many other anti-post markets available, to be honest. And, you know, with a race like the Grand National or something, it's very hard to know, um, you know, so far out. So around this time now, like especially now that I've got a bit more time on my hands, I'd be looking through the Cheltenham markets to see whether there's any type of value there. And then, you know, if you saw something, uh, I might put on a bet now. Uh, but mostly I'd probably wait until around that September, October time and have a real look through, see what I fancy going into this season. Uh, things usually have slightly cleared themselves up at that stage, and uh, I, I'd have a few pokes. Uh, in terms of keeping up with the form with Ireland, I've just spent so much time on the Racing Post app. I'm doing like form every day, um, an hour, two hours, stuff like that. One thing I probably shouldn't do as much as I do is back horses in England, like especially midweek racing in England, because to be honest, I don't know the form anywhere near as well. And if I kept, you know, strictly to, you know, national hunt racing in Ireland or something like that, I'd actually make pretty decent profits. Uh, but that's one thing I'd advise to all of you guys, try and find a niche that you like. Some people might find it's, you know, national hunt racing in Ireland. Some people might think it's all weather racing in England, but find that niche and back it. Uh, John McCabe, what one horse set the seed for your love of horse racing? Um, probably the first kind of big racing I got into, one of the first days I was at Leopardstown was Hurricane Fly beating Jeski. Uh, Christmas 2014 I think it was and obviously that was brilliant now I was at the tail end of Hurricane Fly's career there so you know it's hard to it's hard to kind of pin it on him um, but he was one of them and I'd say probably it was Duvan and Faheen other than that because uh, 2015 was really my first Cheltenham where I was genuinely like kind of taking it seriously and watching it kind of fairly religiously and obviously Duvan won the Supreme that year and Faheen won the Champion Hurdle so I you know I backed both of them on the first day so they were two of my first kind of Cheltenham winners and also they were two just brilliant horses and have been two brilliant horses so probably those three I know they're all Willie Mullins horses one also that um, I did really love was Don Cossack I thought he was a superb horse uh, again didn't probably get to see him as much as I would have liked to but he was still a brilliant horse then Conniff42, I'm hope, uh, hoping I'm um, pronouncing that right, just having a bit of a talk about Mark Walsh's ride on Elixir Dane and kind of can, you know, can we give criticism almost? I think you can, uh, but within reason. Now, let's be honest with ourselves, because unfortunately, as much as people don't want to say it, the times you criticise jockeys, you are invariably talking out of your pocket, even to a small extent. Um because I remember I went mad at Ryan Moore once at Leopardstown one year on uh, the Champions Weekend. And he got a horse called Sir John Lavery beat in the Boomerang Stakes. And I was absolutely furious with him. I couldn't believe what he'd done and stuff like that. Um, I think you're allowed to have a little bit of a blow. In terms of that ride itself, it's hard to know. Like With the position he managed to get himself into, he actually would have taken an awful lot of energy to kind of go back and then kind of go behind a steering for lunch so yes i know in hindsight it looks stupid that he comes up on his outside your man's jumping to his right uh so much as he was especially coming down the hill uh but the mistake he makes to fall is actually an independent mistake now it's probably based on the fact that he was kind of worried about the other horse but it wasn't like he was kind of brought down he does make an independent mistake uh so uh, hindsight's kind of a good one on that but I think he was trying to do the right thing in terms of bringing the horse forward that was probably the best chance the horse had of you know getting close in the race was making that move uh, so I'd be prepared to let that one go and I don't like you can criticize a jockey every now and then but I would keep it minimal to be honest I don't think they need it and I don't think it's particularly necessary 
Audrin Hobbs, again, hopefully pronouncing every name correctly. If I'm not, I'm really sorry. Uh, when should we start anti-post betting for Cheltenham and other big meetings? Uh, I would just be concerned, no, not concerned, but I'd just be wary for some people. Like, obviously, if you see a good bet at the moment, do back it. I don't mind that. But just at the moment, considering we've nothing to do and we've nothing to bet on, don't bet too much on Cheltenham right now, I don't think. Uh, just wait and, you know, let, let it all ease out. As I say, I'd probably be having my main uh, pokes, anti-pokes in around September, October time. Toby Foster says, in your lifetime, who's the best three-mile chaser never to win a Gold Cup? Um, probably there's better horses in my overall lifetime, but I kind of saw this question as one, you know, of at the, you know, the times that I've been watching racing. Um, who's the best three milers not to win a gold cup? So that's been like since 2014 to now. And I'd say probably on the balance of probabilities, it was Q card and Jackadam. Uh, Jackadam was obviously desperately unlucky um, not to win a gold cup one of the years. And Q card obviously fell when he was in with a massive chance uh, in his year when he was going for the bonus point on Cossack and Jackadam in the end as well uh, so probably in my lifetime there's been better horses that haven't won a gold cup but those two always stroke my hand um in terms of that kind of category in terms of being maybe a little bit unlucky not to have won one Sean Anderson uh says um his favorite horse is Many Clouds who was my favorite horse of all time uh it was it is slash was Duvan uh, I did absolutely love Don Cossack and I love Vator as well uh, if we're talking about some of those really classy horses and then I do like um, I'm a big Paul Nolan fan so a few of his horses at the moment you know latest exhibition and Discoram and stuff like that I suppose at like a lower level they're horses that always seem to you know try their hardest for me and always seem to run well Kubo 67 put in this big list of horses and once kind of was trying to predict which ones go for which I would agree with a fair few of them I think MYLN will end up in the Marsh Appreciated will end up in the Ballymore Benita Jew I think will still be in the Mares next year which is a shame but I think it's probably the truth Abixabras will go to the Champion Hurdle Champ will go to the Gold Cup Sam Crow will go to the Ryanair Faheen I'd say more than likely will be retired uh, and if he does go to Cheltenham, it'll be the Ryanair. And I think Honeysuckle will go novice chasing. I think she'll end up in the Marsh or the RSA. That's probably the one that I'd uh, slightly disagree in you there. I think a lot of people think she's going to go back to the Mare's Hurdle, but she jumps like a chaser. And it'll be very interesting seeing her chasing against Geldings actually next year, if that was to happen. Uh, Darren Tabner asks me about flat racing and speed figures and I would love to come back to you Darren with an actual answer here but speed figures on the flat like I have no idea I genuinely have no idea which is probably poor I should know um I'm more of a visual man um like you can get caught up on stats there was obviously that uh whole visionary incident last summer where he put up this brilliant time figure and he ended up being a bust Sometimes kind of times can be useful, sometimes they can be overlooked, like they can be almost overrated as a way to uh, try to find winners and stuff like that. Personally, I'd be more of a visual man than uh, taking the times myself. But I'm sure there's probably plenty of people. I think Andy Holding, um, the odds checker, kind of their main tipster, he's a big speed ratings guy and stuff like that. I think he's got stuff up online, you know, explaining his methods and stuff like that which is very interesting racing commentator name the horse racing victory that made you cheer the loudest his was a horse called prohibit in the king's stand uh, for anti-post reasons and again probably for anti-post reasons as well album photo in 2019's gold cup has to be up there in terms of being actually on the track it would probably be faheen in this year's flow gas novices chase uh as probably was the case with an awful lot of people it was some sight uh seeing him jump the last in front and everyone went berserk um that would probably be the one from on track and off track it was album photo uh last year where i was up in my attic kind of giving it large and shouting out the windows all of that james monaghan how did you get into racing pretty simple my dad used to watch a lot of racing when he was my age uh he kind of then went 
just didn't go off us, but just didn't get to go to it that much. And then when I got to kind of around 15, 16, uh, which was 2014, no, it wasn't 15 or 16 then, uh, it was 14, 15 then, um, yeah, Leopardstown is only around 10 minutes walk down the road from us. Uh, we decided to go one of the Christmases. I immediately caught the bug. He caught the bug again. And we go to racing an awful lot. We probably go once every two weeks and go to a lot of the big festivals. Like I go all four days over Christmas. We go to the Dublin Racing Festival. We go to all the big days, you know, Happens Grace, John Dirk and all of them. Um it's good kind of, I suppose, father-son bonding time and stuff like that. But that was really how it happened. It kind of came from him. Jason Gorman, how good could Malone Road be? Um, he looked like a bit of a monster back when he was a bumper horse. I'd say if he manages to get back to the track, all being well, I think he still could be an excellent horse. I'm not sure, though, and maybe these injuries have taken something out of him. And you'd have to be looking more maybe at Envoilen and Bally Adam as being kind of the Cheaply Park main ones uh, from Gordon's stable. I know there's the likes of Fernie Hollow and Aplutar who are very good horses as well. Mark Perry, uh, favourite sports other than racing, teams you follow and favourite players. Uh, as you can probably tell, I play a lot of cricket and watch a lot of cricket. Uh, I watch. Uh, a fair bit of county cricket I'm a Worcestershire fan uh, a lot of people though watching this won't be watching cricket so they might probably know what I'm talking about there and I'm a big football fan so I have three teams I support one over here in Ireland Shamrock Rovers which would probably be my main team and then two over in England I'm a Villa fan uh, from family connections and I'm also a York City fan which is because we've been to York a fair few times as a family uh, kind of again family connections I suppose so I know a lot of people only support the one club I support the three but they're never going to face each other you know a League of Ireland club a Premier League slash Championship club probably in a, in a couple of minutes time and a Vanarama North club uh, they're not usually facing against each other but those are my three football teams and Worcestershire and I suppose obviously Irish cricket uh, for cricket Mikey O'Reilly uh, he's actually from the cricket uh, my drink of choice is a pint of Guinness always uh, no questions asked uh, Steve-O71 was there ever a bet you couldn't see getting beat but it got turned over and do I have a system for betting in terms of a system for betting not particularly I'm a big form man uh, I do like proven form in the book especially um for you know bigger racing in terms of irish national hunt racing i suppose you're trying to look for horses that maybe are a bit unexposed you do have to really kind of do your research in terms of trying to find the types of trainers that are potentially going to not swindle the system but you know they could run three moderate enough races in maiden hurdles and then win a handicap first time out. You're trying to find those. Those are the ones that make your days and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, no, mostly just uh, a lot of kind of form analysis. In terms of horses that I didn't really see getting beat, probably this year at Cheltenham, I could not see um, two horses getting beat, actually. I couldn't see Benny DeJew getting beat. And I know she didn't get maybe the greatest ride, but I still didn't see her getting beat. And I didn't see appreciated getting beat, I must say, in the bumper. I was absolutely devastated seeing him uh, finish second, especially turning in. I thought, happy days. I was counting the cash. And because I'd had a little bit of a saver on Queen's Brook as well on the day, and they turned in one and two. I was like, happy days. Like, <laughs> you know, these are going to absolutely pull clear. And then Fernie Hollow comes and does us, uh, which was devastating. But probably Benny and appreciated. And if you want to kind of, I don't really have a system, but it's a lot of form work and a lot of form analysis. And the last question for today's video, as I say, if I haven't done your question today, they will be up on Wednesday. Uh, but Charlie Emerson with top picks for Cheltenham 2021. And I will give you three that I think will run well and are just a bit overpriced. I think simply the bets for the Ryanair, I think he'll go that route and has a big chance. I think Captain Guinness for the Arkle, Henry de Bromhead can often bring novice hurdlers to 
ex like kind of ordinary novice hurdlers to very good novice chasers and this horse was a good novice hurdler so hopefully he'll be a very exciting two mile novice chaser and latest exhibition for the RSA desperately unlucky in the Albert Bartlett got hampered before the last and got beat ahead the Nolans I know the Nolans actually uh, decently and they think this horse will be an absolutely superb chaser a much better chaser than he was a hurdler, which is a frightening prospect. That RSA could be hot next year, but I think he's got as good a chance as any. So, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video, and if I did answer your question, I hopefully gave you an adequate answer and one that you wanted to hear. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel down below as we try to keep interaction going in these times of adversity. And of course... As I said before, if I haven't mentioned your question yet, it will be on the video later in the week. So until then, hope you guys stay lucky, stay safe, and I'll see you on Wednesday or Thursday. Cheers.